and welcome to Rosie Crafted Colours um, and today is going to be my first colour and chat video now this is the first one I'm doing so I'm sorry if um, maybe I run out of things to say or I say um a lot <laughs> while I'm thinking because I've never done this before so I'm just going to see how it goes but I'm thinking of making Wednesday my colour and chat day um, I don't quite feel confident enough yet to do live streams, um, but maybe colour and chat is like the in-between way of doing that. But please, you know, if you want to chat to me, chat to me. I tend to always con um, answer and reply to people. Um, sometimes I miss people's messages because YouTube doesn't always tell me um, somebody's, uh, it doesn't always notify me that someone's messaged. Um, so I have got a topic I'd like to talk about today, but if you have any topics you'd like me to talk about in future, just let me know and I'll talk about them. So today I'm going to be colouring um, in Johanna Basford's, Johanna Basford's Enchanted Forest. Um, this is the cover, I'm going to take it away because I don't like having the dust jackets on. So the topic of this video is based on this book. Now this book um, has a picture in that I hate and it's put me off the book, which is silly. So yeah, I'll show you the page first before we get into anything else. Here it is, and I really dislike it. I finished it in November 2019, but I started it um, quite a few years ago, maybe 2017, and I'm so unhappy with it. I really dislike it. And I dislike it so much that it almost has made me want to rebuy the book. But I'm not going to. I'm just going to embrace the picture and see it as part of who I am on my journey. Um, so here we go. I'll show you what else I've coloured in the book. I've coloured this, which I'm quite happy with. I did this with... By the way, this was done with, I think, with 3H Smith pencils and then a few other pencils like... Um, Derwin Lightfast and I think Graphitint, a couple of Graphitint pencils. So there are water-based pencils on here. Maybe they'd look better if I'd applied water, but I didn't. So yeah, there's this page, the name paint page, which I'm quite happy with. And I drew my name in the um, Johanna Basswood style that she um, showed you how to do on her YouTube. So yeah, I used Stadler um, pencils for that. They're original ones. And this double spread, hopefully it all fits on the screen for you is um, I'm actually happy with it. It's really simple, but I really like how I've coloured everything in. I think it really works. It, the border works for the picture. So yeah. So I think I'm going to start colouring in here. So I'm just going to put a little bit of paper behind because I'm going to start on this side, I think. Oh, <laughs> I don't know how that got in there. Right, there we go, just a bit of paper. So I am going to use my... Um, Stedler, uh, I don't know what they're called. What are they called? Have they got an are they tri plus or something? Uh, Ergo Soft. And I have a set of 36, but I also have a set of 24, I think, mixed in there. So it looks like I've got more than I do have, but I've got a lot of repeat colours. So I'm going to use those because I've used them in this book before and I do like them. I like them. They're, they're an okay budget brand of pencils. So, first, I'm going to find somewhere to put this. I'm going to move my, I've got a sharpener, a box I used for my sharpener. I'll show you actually. Um, this is a box I was given for Christmas one year, and if you can just see here, it's a Marmite box. And what it was, it came with um, some empty jars of Marmite and some seed packets, and you grew the herbs in there for your kitchen. Well, um, those Marmite jars were quite small, so weren't very good for growing herbs in. So what I ended up doing was taking a little tin pencil case, popping that in, and I put all my sharpeners in there. I do own more sharpeners, but they're probably out and about somewhere else, living their best life in my home, hiding somewhere. <laughs> so yeah, I know that's not really interesting, but I just thought I'd show you just seeing as I mentioned it. So I'm going to get that out of my way. And I think I might start with... This little bunny here is, is calling to me and I think I'd like to do him in grey. So I'm just going to get my grey and the dark grey. Might get black. No, no, no. Yeah. 
I might get cream as well. Do I have cream? I have. Yeah, I have this colour. This colour can do for my cream. So, yeah. What I was saying then, I have the Stedler sharpener as well, which is really good because it's great for these pencils. Um, it's a topic that came up in one of my other videos and a topic I've been talking about to um, one of two of my friends on Instagram and it is based around that page that I just showed you before and it's disliking a picture and the other thing is disliking a picture and then wanting to replace the book it's the first time I've ever felt like that that I've wanted to replace a book but I have wanted to replace this book many times I've thought about it but one of my lovely subscribers said to me and it her name is colorful colorist she said to me that um these pages these pages we don't like they're part of our sort of coloring history you know so one day when i hopefully one day complete this book my bunny's quite dark isn't he oh i want him to be a bit lighter it doesn't matter um one day when I finish this book or hopefully one day I'll finish this book I'll look back on that page and be like wow that is my progression look at my progression so I'm actually going to embrace that I really am pleased that she came to me and said that um, and I really have taken that on board and thought about it um, yeah I really do believe she's right that we we need our first pages just as much as our best pages and our bad pages because it shows how good we are getting and it shows how we're progressing so what I'd really like to do is now I've decided to keep the book and I've obviously decided to colour in it and just start colouring in it because it was putting me off colouring on the in the book because I hated that page so much but yeah one day I'm going to finish this book and I'm going to be really happy that I saved that page and that I didn't buy a new book because not every bit of my colouring journey is going to be full filled with perfect pages is it you know it's just not it's just not and another one of my lovely subscribers who is a youtuber as well and makes wonderful content um pointed out to me that you know that she doesn't rip out pages that she just tries to fix them um or you know she doesn't fix them she just puts them to one side and that was pebbles adult coloring and i totally agree with her i totally agree i think there's been times i've disliked pages and then i've got to the end and i've finished them and i've really really loved my page so it's really important to to keep those pages i think i'm coming to believe that it's important for us to keep the pages that we didn't like at first it really is so i'm gonna color this page and i'm gonna see what happens and hopefully my love for this book is going to um grow again because they are great but this is a great book and it is my favourite so far of Johanna Basford's books. I don't know what to call her Johanna or Johanna, you know, but um, yeah, it is one of my favourite books of hers. It really is. So it would be really nice to finish it. It'd be really nice to see it done. You know what I mean? I'm just going to sharpen a pencil. So what do you think about that? Do you, um, do you have any thoughts on that? Because um, we all think differently, don't we? I mean, I never want to rip a page out of a book. Um, I, I don't like that. I don't think I could do that. Even if I really made a complete mess of a page, I just can't rip a page out of my books. I like them to be intact. Um, I think if I coloured a page and I really just couldn't live with it, well, oh, I'm really sorry about that. That's my, um, 
old phone going off. <laughs> I use it to watch YouTube on when I'm using my phone for other things. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think that it's a good idea to save your pictures. I think that they show our progression and our progression is a great thing to see. We all work really hard as colourists to do our best work. And, you know, at the time, a bad page could have been your best work. So why not embrace that and be proud of your not so great pages? That's what I think about that really, is that we should embrace what, what we've done. And also we need to cut ourselves a little bit of slack. I am so, um, what's the word, I um, can't think of the word, but I'm always comparing myself and, and I don't think enough of myself, you know, when it comes to my colouring. People say such wonderful things about my colouring and I really appreciate it, it's so nice. But then, you know, you see other people's colouring and you can't help but compare yourself sometimes. And I don't think we should prepare, compare ourselves to other colourists because, because everyone's journey is different and everyone's skill level is different and everyone's skill set is different and everybody um, wants to finish a page in a certain way. You know, some people um, want to colour it in, their, in a style that is their own style and... There is nothing good about just looking at someone's work and feeling less because their work is so phenomenal. I mean, some of the artists I see on YouTube, on Instagram and on YouTube actually, some artists, and I call colourists artists because I believe they are, just because they're colouring someone else's picture does not make you any less of an artist. Um, and I feel that my pictures don't stand up and I'm guessing a lot of us feel that way you know there's people on um especially on Instagram you see such perfect pictures and it's so easy to sit there and like go well well I can't colour that well <laughs> you know but we shouldn't do that because Everyone's colouring is beautiful. It's beautiful that you sat down to add colour to a page. It's beautiful that you took the time for yourself to um, switch off from the world and do something which I believe is self-care. Colouring is so good for you. It's so good for your mental health. It's so good to help you de-stress. It's good for us to have a creative outlet, especially nowadays. So... I believe that we shouldn't um, compare ourselves because that is the issue really. I sound like I'm talking about something different but I'm really not. Um, that is the issue with that picture. I've seen so many beautiful, wonderful pages coloured of that picture and I look at mine and I think, oh. How can mine be so terrible? How can it be so bad? But it's not terrible, really. It's it's not. It's not how I colour now. But at that time, that was how I coloured, you know. And the background was. That's the bit that really I don't like the most. The background I struggled with and do you know what at least I tried I tried to do the page and I tried to make it look good as good as I felt it could look and I do think I, I didn't like it when I finished it but yeah it shows where I've come from with my colouring do any of you feel like that is anyone or any of you like ashamed to look at your older pictures because you shouldn't be really you definitely shouldn't be you should definitely be happy with what you can do as an artist as a colorist you should be pleased with with whatever you can manage and i am a true believer that practice makes perfect um i don't believe 
I used to draw a lot and people would always say to me, wow, how do you draw like that? I wish I could draw it. I can't draw. And I honestly believe anyone can draw. Um, and I honestly think anyone can colour. All that it is, is practice. It's just practice, like any skill. Like if you took up knitting, for instance, it would take practice for you to learn and it would take practice for your garments to be right. So we should give ourselves that time with our colouring too, because it's hard, it's hard for us to be perfect instantly, you know? Although none of us really are truly perfect anyway, but it's hard for us to be, you know, you, I think, like, um, I really love Peter Hewitt's videos and her colouring is gorgeous. And she was the first colourist I came across and I was just starting to, to get into love with colouring. And if I had compared myself to her beautiful colouring, I wouldn't have got anywhere. I wouldn't have coloured. The same with people like Chris Cheng, whose art is just amazing. It, it, it could put you off, but if you watch her videos and you follow her tutorials, your page will basically look the same. You will learn new skills that you didn't know you could learn. And that's all that we need with our colouring. We need to practice, we, you know, but not practice like it's a chore. Practice if it's enjoyable because colouring should be enjoyable and there shouldn't be pressure to, to do a certain thing or to colour a certain way. But I feel like I'm, I'm sort of ranting a little bit so I'm really sorry if I come across a bit ranty. I just, I'm very passionate about colouring. It's given me a lot, um, really colouring is it's the one like hobby that really has stuck and I really love it I just love to add colour <laughs> to pages so yeah but um what do you guys think do you agree with me do you think that we should be care more kind to ourselves and compare ourselves less to others because really that works in every um part of your life doesn't it you know we shouldn't compare ourselves we are all just beautiful and perfect the way we are you know and the amount of beautiful colorists i watch and subscribe to and follow on instagram and everyone's style and skill level is different. But I truly, honestly love the colouring people do. Whether, whether they are super, super skilled at colouring and they know all the best techniques. Or they just, I don't know, black colour. Do you know? There's nothing wrong with that either. And... Um, it can be just as beautiful. It's an expression of who you are because, because you've chosen images that speak to you. So it says something about you already. And then also the colours you choose, the, the atmosphere you give to your page, it speaks about the person so much. It's a truly beautiful hobby. I really do enjoy colouring. It's, it's a great hobby. There's so many boulders here to colour in. <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm going to colour the bunny's burrow in. Maybe I'll colour it brown. I've seen this page coloured as, um, because it's a map, isn't it? So I've seen it coloured like an old map, which looks lovely. But I think I'm just going to colour it, um, colour each section. Just I want this to be something easy to colour. I don't want to sit and try and like fill backgrounds in and stuff. I just think I'm going to give myself um, sort of an easy colouring page because that thing with this book is I haven't coloured in it for so long. Let me just check when I last coloured in it. 
the 1st of January 2020, so a year ago, because of how much I started to really dislike that page. And I built that page up in my head to be the worst thing in the world. And you know what, when I look at it, it's not that bad, really. It's not my best, um, but it's not that bad. So I was hope think I might do this as a very easy page, just get everything coloured in. It's nice and simple, not much um, like uh, like gradients and things. Just the just a few simple gradients, and see if I can get this page um, out and done. And I think I'll feel really happy once I do because it means I'm overcoming that the feeling of inadequacy when it comes to this book i'm really looking forward to it coming out as the mini version it's, just, it's coming out soon and um, i think it might be february she's she has two books coming out soon doesn't she johanna bassford there's um the world of wonders book which looks fantastic i can't wait for that book every little picture she's put up on her instagram as a little tease to it They've just look beautiful. It's just like loads of little hidden worlds and oh, I just can't wait for it. It looks amazing. And the other book is obviously the mini Enchanted Forest one. Now, I do have the mini um, Secret Garden one, which I don't really know why I bought because I don't really like the Secret Garden book. I did own it and I passed it on to somebody who would give it the love that it deserves. But I um I bought the mini one for some reason. I don't know why, but I might colour in it, I might not. Um it's I mean I was expecting from the book that it would be pages from the big book, but not just made a mini, simplified a little bit as well because they're on a tiny scale, but they haven't, they're just smaller. And there's a couple of bonus images that weren't in the original book but yeah I've yet to colour in it really I've added a little bit of colour I've coloured a couple of leaves in there <laughs> and that's about it <laughs> because it, it is very highly detailed and very small and intricate you need very sharp pencils for sure so yeah I don't know why I bought it I can't I don't know I've got this weird thing with colouring books that like if I want it, I like I buy it, and I know that sounds silly to say, but this is how I've ended up with a vast collection in just a year. I've got a huge collection of colouring books, <laughs> just massive, and I'm hoping to do a video of my uncoloured colouring books because I've just done the video for the ten untouched colouring books that I'm going to hopefully add some colour to this year, and I was really happy because. I came up with the idea that at the end of the video I would add colour to one of the books and I um, took out my Hannah Carlson book and added some colour to it and the feeling of sort of, it's really silly, but the feeling of accomplishment I got because I finally added colour to a book I think I've had for just under a year. It just felt really good and I was talking in the video about how I think it's a good idea with some of our books that we won't touch, we don't touch just to get them out and colour a little bit on the book, just to to break the ice with the book, so to speak. You know, I think that's a good idea. I think, you know, if I didn't want to colour this page, maybe just coming in and colouring that rabbit would make me go, well, okay, I'll colour in those lanterns next. And, oh, look, those rocks look easy. You know, that kind of thing. I mean, I was intimidated by the Jasmine Beckett Griffith books for a long time. And the minute I got some pencil on there I really really did lose some of that fear you know and as my lovely friend Pebbles says um what's the point in owning things if you're never going to use them colour with them or colour with them there's no point you're just wasting these beautiful products and your money so I'm trying to sort of remember that as a lesson at the moment because um it's true it's very true we should be giving some love to our book shouldn't we so i think with the the burrow i think i'm gonna shade it in a bit brown hopefully it won't look too dark and dismal 
don't want it to be really really dark but I'm thinking this looks really cute so far <laughs> it just goes to show how slow I am I'm colouring something really simple and I feel like I should have coloured in loads by now but I haven't <laughs> So like I was saying before, if you have any ideas for things you'd like me to talk about or maybe possibly show you within a video, please let me know. Um, I am planning on doing some little sort of mini tutorial videos. Um, I've been asked to show you how I colour gold. So instead of doing a video showing you how I colour gold with every medium, I was thinking of doing like tiny videos of but well, they're probably not going to be tiny, but smaller videos with say, this is how this is how I coloured this gold in Prismacolors, this is how I coloured this gold in um, Black Widow, maybe like that. I think that would be the way to take the least pressure off myself because I do lack self-esteem when it comes to things like that. So it'd be nice to like baby step my way in to doing it. My little bunny in his burrow, isn't it cute? I'm not sure whether I'm going to do anything with these open spaces. I think I'm going to leave the open spaces um, just open. I think I'm just going to do that. Um, and I think I'll do brown between here, like the soil. I love the little hidden skull. I really love that uh, um, Johanna Basswood's style is so pretty. And then she hides things like skulls. I mean, she always has a skull page in her books and like made of flowers or like fish or something if it's the the uh thingy one the oh i forgot what it's called the ocean one but i really love that i love that she does that because she, her books are so pretty but she still manages to put a little bit of something different in there you know a school made of leaves is is really cool to me i do love as you know i do love my like creepier things in life I enjoy spookier things which you know explains my hashtag for the year <laughs> which I'm not going to plug because I plug it all the time and it's probably getting not boring hearing me say my um, hashtag every time I do a video so yeah I think I'm, I think I'm gonna end the video soon I'm not really sure how long it's been I'm sorry if it was boring I hope it wasn't let me know if you have any ideas of things I can talk about in these videos or that you'd like to hear or see because this isn't just my channel, it's anyone that subscribes, it's your channel too, you're part of this so if there's anything you'd really want to hear or see just let me know and I'll do my best to try and do whatever it is that you want within reason <laughs> I mean if you want me to go and review some Holbein pencils I'm sorry <laughs> I can't <laughs> I don't have them so and I don't think I'll be buying them just yet they are so pricey but yeah if you've got anything you'd like me to talk about please let me know um, please feel free to comment on my um, videos I do enjoy um, talking to you all and hearing your feedback um, if you've got some criticism for me, please don't feel um, uncomfortable with giving me some you know, constructive criticism. I wouldn't mind that. It doesn't bother me. Um, I only want to make videos. I wanted to make videos for myself and for anyone that wanted to watch them, obviously. But because people have subscribed to me, which I'm really pleased about and really excited about, I would like to make videos that people would enjoy. So let me know what you think about my idea to do a colour and chat on a Wednesday. It's going to just, for now, I'm just going to see how this one went. Maybe next week I won't do one if, if this isn't, you know, received well. I don't want to do something that people don't want to watch. I don't want to try and like overload you with videos you're not enjoying. And also before I finish, I'd really love to say a big thank you to anyone that's subscribed recently I've just got to 300 subscribers a couple of days ago and I never thought I'd get to 100 subscribers so to get to 300 subscribers is just mind-blowing to me it means so much to me and 
I just can't believe it. I really can't believe it that that many people would, would, would want to watch my videos enough that they'd want to subscribe to my channel. So thank you so much, all of you wonderful, wonderful people that have took time out of your day to watch my videos, um, comment or like or subscribe. It really is. It's doing my self-esteem the world of good, honestly. And I'm really enjoying making these videos, especially tag videos. I'm really into tag videos. But if you've got anything you want me to talk about, like I said, please let me know. I'm, I'm comfortable with talking about most things, really. Um, the only thing I would say is... I know probably no one's going to ask me to talk about these things, but I don't really want to talk about the state of the world right now. Um, and, you know, the way things are. I want this to be a positive channel and we could all do some positivity. The world has its own ne enough negativity in it, doesn't it? So if we can sort of keep it of a more positive viewpoint, that's great, you know. But if you're going to ask me my opinions on, you know, what's going on in the world right now I'm probably not going to share my my opinions on that because we all need to take a break from that anyway don't we so thank you so much for watching I hope you like my little bit of tiny bit of colouring I did in my burrow my bunny's looking quite happy and I already feel better about this page and I really just want to thank um the colourful colourist and Pebbles Adult Colouring for sort of giving me a bit of a, what's the word, um, I can't think of the word, a bit of a reality check when it comes to my colouring book, it's only a page, it's only a page in a giant colouring book, you know, it's just one page, so I might upset myself over this one, one mistake when it's a beautiful book, why not? just forget about it so thank you very much for watching i will end the video here i keep saying i'm going to end the video and then i start rattling on again i'm such a rambler aren't i but thank you very much for watching my video thank you so much it means the world to me and i hope you all stay safe and happy coloring whatever you're coloring right now bye